Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Tech Encounters with Ramona Cedeno. Today I have Jimena Gordon, Director of Marketing from Max and Row. Welcome, Jimena. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm really happy to be here. Um, got into New York last night. Um, we're actually here for a meetup event that we're doing on Thursday. Um, so yeah, it's called Let's Talk About Blockchain, which is I guess what we're doing here today as well. Yes, <laughs> thank you. So it's, we're so excited to have uh, Jimena here today. I have been following uh, blockchain, cryptocurrency, and I have to admit this has always been a topic of confusion for me. So I'm so happy to have Jimena here to talk to us about what blockchain is, how it relates to fintech, how it relates to technology in general. And if you have any questions about the topic, please feel free to send them at the end and we'll be happy to respond back to, uh, to you uh, after the show. So, Jimena, yeah. <laughs> I have been, I, you know, I mentioned this before, to me, I, I, at the beginning when I heard cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and blockchain, it was all like boring to me. It's like, <laughs> what, what is this? Like, now yeah. I know uh, 20 accounting systems and I will find uh, tax software uh, yeah. applications and now I have to learn what blockchain and all this technology is. So yeah. for those of us out here that are not very familiar with the topic, can you tell us in very plain English yes. what is blockchain? Yeah, um, so first of all, blockchain was a technology that was born um, out of Bitcoin in a way mm -hmm. because um, it is the platform through which you transacted Bitcoin. So there's a lot of confusion with the two terms. So you know, crypto refers to uh, coins or tokens that you exchange, that you sell, that have a value. Okay. And then um, blockchain really is a technology that expands beyond crypto. So for blockchain, um, like you mentioned, you can use it for financial services, but there's also so many other things you can use it for. Um, so for example, with government, um, with voting, with identity, um, with even if, if you're drinking wine, it's even for tracking products like you can even track to the grape where it came from and it's, it's so many, so many uses and it's really not that complicated. It's a simple technology. Blockchain is literally a group of blocks that get um, assigned and have a transactional value and the thing that makes it so um, I guess strong in the world today because everybody's talking about blockchain. It was actually the buzzword of 2018. I think it was the number one buzzword. Um, but you could compare it to, let's say, um, everybody uses Google Docs, right? Yes. Okay, you use Google Docs. So um, the changes that happen on a document could be the same way that a blockchain is used. That's one of the most common, like, down to earth examples because it means that if you, if I, for example, um, transact Bitcoin with you, that transaction will be on a blockchain, it will be recorded there. Nobody can ever, ever, ever change that. So it's immutable, it's transparent, and it's safe because it's not controlled by a single entity. It's controlled by lots of computers that validate that transaction. Um, and I'm, I'm using, you know, transaction as an example right now, but it could, it could be, for example, for property management, um, for the deed of a house. It could be, like I said, a product. Um, in Chile, um, for example, I was just there doing one of our meetups. Um, they're using it for, the government's using it to track um, energy consumption. Mm -hmm. So for example, nobody can ever change that record and you have that immutable record forever. Um, that's, that's basically it and, and that makes for a really safe alternative to a lot of the things we have going on right now. Um, yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> you mentioned transactions, and, and I have to admit that as an accountant and a finance person, when I did my research on blockchain, the, re the way I was able to make sense of it was by using some of the examples that some of the uh, bloggers use, which is mm -hmm. it's a transaction, you follow the life cycle of that transaction, mm -hmm. it's the ledger um, for the transactions of cryptocurrency. So that makes sense to me, given my background. So it's good that you are able to explain it using the Google uh, Doc example for those that are not in accounting or finance. Yeah. Now, uh, what is Max and Roe, uh, 
what are their roles in, in crypto? So what do they do and how, what do you do for them? Okay, so um, Max and Rose's main focus is not necessarily crypto. We are gonna have a token and we're actually releasing a wallet starting September. Yeah. Um, and that is the reason why we're having this meetups because we're launching our main chain and our wallet um, in September and we're traveling around the world trying to build community at this, po at this moment in time. Um, so, Max and Row is going to have that aspect, um, which is common. A lot of blockchain companies have it, but um, we want to move beyond that. And we have a scheme of products from here up to like 2023, 20, like um, because with blockchain you have to be testing and you have to be launching, and everything is beta, and um, it's a relatively new technology. So even the big names like IBM or all these people, even Libra with Facebook, this is all kind of theoretical at this point um, of the things that you want to do. But what we are looking to do short term is to release our mainnet, mainnet mean, meaning the blockchain itself, mm -hmm. with it, the wallet. Um, and then we will be launching other um, products that have to do um, with uh, tokenizing assets. Interesting. Which is, um, yeah, it's a different approach. So it's it's being able to tokenize your properties or, or maybe even your identity. So that's what we are looking move forward um, and not to cut you off but we, <laughs> we are um, usually having we're having something called the TAI a true, uh, true asset issuing which is uh, a term that we've coined for what we're trying to do with the tokens now every time you mention any any uh, word that resonates with my field which is accounting and finance I get super excited mm -hmm. so when you mentioned tokenizing assets yes. right away I thought is it is it going to be for um, physical assets, tangible assets, or cash and, and intangible assets? Um, like property, physical, physical tangible, yeah. okay. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, thinking, uh, I'm thinking both, but again, um, for more you can actually go to our website and read our white paper, but all of these is, is like I say, development work, and um, something that can be true today may change later. Right. Um, and that's not because we don't, we just decided not to do it, it's probably because, you know, in development, we have our development team in Asia, and they probably figured out a better way to do it or a different way to right. do it. Um, but but that is kind of like the goal that we're aiming towards um, yeah, right now. And it's very interesting to me that, uh, that you mentioned that blockchain can be applied to non-fintech uh, and okay. non-cash uh, um, or currency items. So I, I read somewhere that by 2020, about 70% of financial entities for other financial industry will be using blockchain, but it sounds like this can translate to other industries, not just financial services. Yeah, actually probably even more industries than financial services. Like I said, like since it's linked to Bitcoin, it's linked to, to crypto and, and, and people think finance, but at the end of the day, it can be used for anything and you might already be using it and you don't even know it. So a lot of people actually adopt blockchain because the some of the systems that they use already have it. So they don't necessarily know that they're using blockchain. Like the, the, the end user doesn't have to be aware. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And it was, not, it was actually, I'm curious yeah. about that because I was wondering how this transition to blockchain was going to impact the regular consumer. But it sounds like in some cases you don't even know. Yeah, no. Um, it would probably impact the regular consumer because you'll have alternatives right. to what you have right now, whether it's the banking world or... Um, a really interesting case that I like to talk about is the city of Sug in Switzerland. They actually are running on blockchain right now. Like they, their identity, their like their driver's license, everything is running on a blockchain, and it's really? the first city in the world to do that. So there's there's all these developments going on all around, and there's so many projects. Like if if you go to, we usually go to events and. Um, I remember being so overwhelmed by the blockchain expo we went to in San Francisco last year because there's literally like 500 booths of, a, of all these companies using blockchain and they're developing the coolest products of things that you don't even know about. Um, even us, like we're partnering with an airline in Taiwan, we're partnering with um, people growing tea because mm -hmm. it's also used a lot for agriculture um, because again, you can tokenize land, you can um, in this way, and something you mentioned, some of your clients uh, raised investment, right? Yeah. Um, so blockchain is a really easy way also to raise investments. So um, there's this thing called ICOs, which is like initial coin offering, mm -hmm. which would be kind of the equivalent to an IPO. Right. 
Um, but um, some of these are not so safe, and they've been linked to a lot of scams. Mm -hmm. So uh, us, we're trying to do it in a way called um, SDO, which is Secure Token Offering. Um, but if you tokenize, uh, for example, your business, um, through Max and Roll, you'll be able to um, literally raise money for that business. In, in virtual through their currency? Blockchain. In virtual currency or, or in, in virtual currency, which if you link to an exchange, you can exchange for exactly. fiat. So very interesting. Yeah. How do you, Kimana, how do you um, mm -hmm. enter this industry, and how do you fall in love with uh, crypto, uh, <laughs> with not only crypto but blockchain? It's hard not to fall in love right. because it's so interesting. Um, I my background is in marketing and communication, and I always work with digital marketing and creative products. So. Um, it, I actually started doing content writing for Max and Rome, um, okay. on the side of my um, consulting job. That what I had. did you write about? Um, I was writing about marketing, I was writing about digital marketing, um, I was also writing at the time a book on tobacco. <laughs> yeah, it, it, because that, that was one of our clients um, at the agency. So really random stuff. So I was then started to write about, you know, crypto and blockchain as I started coming into Max and Road doing their website content and stuff like that. Um, and then I got hired officially uh, for a position and asked to move to Taiwan where we have our marketing headquarters. Um, our development is actually in Malaysia. Um, so then I decided I wanted to jump head first because uh, not only do I believe in, in blockchain as a technology, but at least I believe we should know about it. Right. It is something that whether it works or whether it fades away is something that you need to be aware of right now. And I don't think it's going anywhere to be honest, even though there's there's a lot of criticism around it. Because it, it it's disruptive, you know, to the normal order of things, of the way we've been doing things. Um, so I'm just excited to be a part of it, um, to be a part of this evolution and I think a lot of the developments are actually being done in Asia. So mm -hmm. it's a really interesting place to be. Um, there, again, there's so many companies. That's not to say that you know companies in the U.S. or anywhere else are not doing it, but um, I think it's a really interesting place to be because they're more open. Um, governments there are, are open to implement it in, in in ways that are not the common ones. So, so I, I, it's interesting that um, you say that it's. Um no, it is. It's it's here. We have to act. You know, eventually, it's going to be everywhere. At least you need to know about it. Like if if you're watching, uh, I mean, you're doing your part. You know, in a way, you're just getting exactly. to know what is blockchain. As long as you know that, yes. and trust me, for a long time, I it took me a while to get it to, mm -hmm. to wrap my head around it because it's weird. It's like you know, wait. So where is my money, and is mm -hmm. it real, and is it not, and, and how does it work, and but. Yes. You know, yes. For me, it was it, it is also challenging because having you know the person I, I I need to see things right. So I'm an accountant. I'm a conservative. So what I don't see is hard for me to to actually trust. Yeah. So it, it's taking some time, and I'm sure you experience that sometimes with some of the uh, the companies that were clients that you're trying to target. So how do you? And I don't know if this is you or someone in your company, but have you found? A lot of challenges entering, you know, getting a, a specific targeted client mm -hmm. or sending the message across to a specific audience. Uh, yeah, with blockchain, mass adoption is always going to be an issue, right? And, and that's why a lot of blockchain companies fail too. Um, I think two reasons: it's hard to do mass adoption, and at the same time, it's a lot of companies just do blockchain when maybe that's, you know, they shouldn't. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, blockchain is it's great, but it. It maybe it's not for everybody, right. but since it's just such a bus where people who have money are trying to put it into their company, but at the same time, maybe it's not needed for them. Right. Um, so at this point in time, Maxero is not really looking to get. That's not to say that we would right. you know, reject anybody, um, but we are at a stage where we're launching our product. Right. So. Um, our main goal right now is to build community for people to interact with the wallet, for people to use it, for people to even tell us what's wrong with it. You know, um, that's the beauty and that's the thing. I've been working with marketing uh, for products for a long time and with bl the blockchain industry, it, it really is a community. People answer, people ask you, people ask about your token, people take it personally. Um, and and there's it's just different from the way it's done. Um, they use Telegram, they have groups and, and they talk about it and 
it's it's different where us where other products the conversation might be in social media right. and maybe that's not the case for for blockchain companies or for crypto in general um, so right now we just want to get people talking people excited um, and later on I would say that our goal would be to work with governments to align um, the blockchain with governments and we have some partners that we can't disclose yet uh, but also obviously yeah the regular user um, the people with businesses that they want to tokenize and people who want to use the wallet for owning Max and Row tokens, for getting other tokens, um, we will be listing in an exchange. We will reveal that later on. Oh. So, yeah, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> so it sounds like you have, um, so you work with uh, or targeting businesses and individuals. So they want yeah. it, so it's helps individuals, but the token is good for businesses. With blockchain, you always need individuals okay. because you're going to have your nodes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, these are the people who are verifying your transactions. So um, you're always, again, you're always going to have a community. It's the same way with any, I don't know, some of the most famous blockchains like Ethereum. There's, you know, there's a community. There's, there's people um, working on that all the time. Same with big Bitcoin mining, etc. So it, it's more community focused. Do you, would you like, so if you wanted to get some of our audience, uh, our, um, the, those people that are uh, watching us now, if you want them to use, to join your community or start using the wallet, how can they do that? Oh, that's easy. They just go to the website. Um, we have a landing page there uh, about the wallet. Mm -hmm. um, they will literally be able to click and download the wallet, the App Store or Android. But they won't be able to do that until September 1st. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not available right now, but um, we're going to talk about it on, at the event on Thursday. Um, so if anybody's on the New York area, we're doing it at WeWork on Lexington. 450 Lexington. 450 Lexington um, from 6 to 8. Um, and we'll be there with food and drinks and wanting to meet you and network and, again, build community. Yes. But we'll also talk, have a short presentation where we'll talk about it. So. Um, if it's of interest, it's as easy as just downloading something. Yeah, so that event on Thursday from 6 to 8 or 6 to 9 is at 450 Lexington. I will be there and I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to um, hearing what the CEO of Max and Roll has yeah. to say about the company, about blockchain, and everything uh, that's happening in, in that area. I know that you came to New York uh, yesterday yeah. from Thai. One. Yeah, <laughs> and um, you're here for just a few days promoting the meetup. But yeah. is the plan to for you to work in? And then you're launching in New York, and then you're launching in some other uh, oh, states yeah. and countries. Um, so what we're doing right now is it's called Max and World. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're doing uh, literally a world tour. Um, we started in um, June. So I personally have been to Mexico, Colombia, Argentina, Chile, Brazil. Um, and here, and then um, next week we'll have one in Paris, and the week after we'll have another one in London. Great. So yeah, we are, and and if people want us to go somewhere, we're also taking submissions. So you can just contact us through Telegram. Um, you can join our Telegram. Everything is on our website, and you can tell us like, yeah, come here, and, and we we can even plan that. We have also a community leader program, so. If, if you want to be a leader in any city and attend events on our behalf or plan events on our behalf, you can. Um, we're doing anything we can to, again, build community. Um, we had an event in South Korea and we're having another one right after London in Thailand. So we are also doing events on that side of the world and, and we'll continue to do more as, as, as we launch even more products. Um, and then lastly, we're actually hosting a hackathon at the end of the year in Berlin. So that would be exciting. There's, there's, we'll be all over the world. The team is traveling all the time. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities to connect. How large is the team as of now? I know this is going to keep changing. Yeah. Um, how large is the team? Um, in, in marketing, which is in Taiwan, I would say around 20 to 30 people. Wow. I'm looking at my coworker, yeah. James, is here. Um, so maybe 20 to 30 people. And then um, in Malaysia, where there's the development team, they grow all the time. Yes. <laughs> There's so many people there. Maybe like a hundred? No, two hundred. There, there is a hundred. There yeah. is a challenge. I mean, I don't know them yeah. all. I know. <laughs> I can imagine. I didn't realize that you guys yeah. are. Growing. 
growing so fast and it was so big, but they're well, also accepting developer applications. Ah, <laughs> so if right. anybody wants to apply. We're taking, you're taking them from New York to um, Taiwan? Uh, to uh, Malaysia, Malaysia actually, in this case, but they're both amazing. Yes, that's what I was going to actually ask you next because I know that a lot of the tech startups here in the US are, you know, it's challenging to find good developers. And I wonder, is it more even more difficult in for blockchain and crypto, or is it about the same? Uh, again, it's a new field. Yes. So there, if you're if you're looking for forget about developers, if you're looking for a marketer marketer <laughs> specialized in blockchain, you're not gonna. Find, I mean, of course there are, but how long have they been doing this? Right. I mean, Bitcoin was launched in two thousand eight, so maybe. You can't even find like a professional that's been doing blockchain for over 10 years. I don't think so in marketing, much less developing. So um, yes, there's people who are now starting to specialize in this field, but you kind of use your, your regular development skills and apply them to whatever you're trying to do. At the end of the day, it's like a challenge. You're building a product, and these are the specifications, and then you just try to work it. If you can't, then you go back and start and do the problem again. Um, and that's what's kind of been happening for a year. We've been having a lot of changes in what we were, what we want to do based on what we were able to achieve right. as a development team. Um, and then obviously we're always communicating marketing and development. Um, we are wanting to do tech meetups too later on for when um, developers and people who are a bit more techy and specialized want to learn more about the way the blockchain is built and what uh, coding language they're using for what and all of these questions that I will be terrible at answering. <laughs> um, yeah, so sure. somebody else can come and do that. Um, for example, our tech director, um, Carlo Chung, he's amazing um, and he basically is the one taking this project to where it should be. So, so it sounds like you love to uh, you love the field that you're in, and you. I hope you love traveling because you're doing so much. No, <laughs> no I love no it. From Max no, Pro no, nobody <laughs> doesn't like traveling. Right. You know what I mean? Um, it's it's just gets a bit tiring. Yes. But, so, but in addition to those yeah. two things, what do you do for fun? Just you don't have to share everything. Uh, fun. For fun, I love to write. <laughs> uh, since I do content. Yes. Um, and I, Sounds dumb, you know. Read and write. Um, I love reading. I love writing. Um, I love eating. Um, so that I am obsessed with looking at the best restaurants everywhere. Yes. So New York to me is like I don't even know what to do with myself. Cause I'm like, <laughs> I want to go everywhere and I want to eat everything. Uh, I started yesterday. I had a crack pie, which I hadn't <laughs> from Milk Bar. Yes, you know. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, so that's basically my hobby. So as you travel, you have to try different foods and then you probably have to write about it and then you have to read about the culture so that's that's kind of where I'm at and and I you know I just thought of something that you mentioned before that he, Max and Royce did, like, is introducing the different products or uh, exploring different options does that impact what you do for them in a big way uh, you have to reshift the way you do things for the company yeah for sure um, we've had so many, you have to be ready to roll with the changes mm -hmm. like um, if if you are a person who likes, you know, the nine to five and, right. the, and the, you know what your day is going to be like, then yeah, don't come work for us because right. it's, it's been so fun. But at the same time, yeah, you have to, you have to learn to adapt. Um, I've revised our white paper like at least 15 times, <laughs> uh, you know, like just stuff like that. It, it just keeps changing, but that's not bad. That's, right. that's very much normal. It's just that people want to know what's happening right. at, you know, all the time. And, and we are pretty big in Asia. We have a huge community that's always following us and asking questions. So um, it, those are the ones that keep us on, yeah. in check, more or less. So, But we want people here in the U.S. and everywhere in America and Europe to also keep us in check. Yeah. So that's why we're here. So going back to blockchain and, and yeah. cryptocurrency, I, I know that you provide the tokens for the assets and I know that you have the wallets. So let's say... We have, I work with a lot of companies that are in SaaS or, you know, they're in software or tech or professional services firms that might not have assets. Uh, mm -hmm. Can they, how can they use your technology? Can they, can these businesses at some point start using their wallet or is there another um, feature they can mm -hmm. use from, uh, through the company to service their business? Yeah, I mean, 
the wallet, it can be used by anybody. And the thing about our wallet is that it is secure. Um, and a lot of people tell you this, but their KYC checks might not be as strict. Mm -hmm. So the thing about whatever we do with any of our products that I would recommend anybody using is, um, is that it's KYC compliant instantly and in every step of the blockchain. So no matter what product you use, you know that you won't be transacting with someone who's done illegal stuff or fraud or anything. Like these are people, everybody's checked. Everybody that you transact with, that you you know, do anything with on the blockchain is someone um, or an entity in case of a business that has been verified by the most strict um, regu regulatory compliant um, systems in the world. And it's embedded in the whole blockchain, so. So there is a lot of safety and there is also privacy. Um, yeah, that is compliant. So there are no concerns. So when when I think of, uh, I know that one of the things that blockchain is is trying to solve for is cyber attacks, is uh, you know inefficient processes, is uh, yeah. fraud. So this have based on your experience and what you experienced with uh, Max and Roe and the research yeah. that you have done, you find that this is actually the case. Yeah. No, for sure. It's. That's actually our main concern is safety mm -hmm. uh, for the end user and for the blockchain itself. So like you said, we we are very safe as a blockchain in terms of, uh, it's it will be very hard to have any cyber attack or anything. And this is the case for most blockchains yeah. too. Um, that's another reason why people are turning to blockchain because it's more secure. Um, and on top of that, um, we, like I guess our value proposition is that we, are KYC'd every step of the way. So that makes us, I guess, unique. Not to say other people are not doing something similar, but but yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. This is so, so valuable information. I learned a lot today. Like, I know you mentioned the event uh, on Thursday, six yes. o'clock, 450 Lexington. You can register um, on, I, on my page and you can also find it on Eventbrite if you look up uh, Max and Row and how blockchain is changing the world. Mm -hmm. You will find the event and it's free. There is going to be great food and wine. And there is an event, a similar event in London on September 11th. You can also find that one on Eventbrite. Register is free, food and drinks again. So we hope to see you at either one of these events depending on where you are located. Look forward to meeting everyone there. If you have any questions, send them through the page and we'll be happy to answer them. Jimena, myself. And yes. uh, we're here for that. Any final thoughts that you want to share? No, I just want to thank you for your time <laughs> and thank everybody who's watching and um, excited to be here in New York and, and hopefully we'll continue building community. I hope to see everybody on Telegram or Facebook or LinkedIn. Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. All of them. LinkedIn. We're, we're in everybody. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jimena. Thank you nice so much. Having you here. Thank, thank you, you, Ramona. Bye, guys.